And Dan Orlovsky, who loves Carson Wentz, tweeted yesterday, Carson Wentz is hurting his team. Point blank, he's hurting the team. Only reason Washington is in the game is Wentz. Again, this is a big moment because Dan Orlovsky is the biggest supporter of Carson Wentz. So I appreciate the honesty, Dan, with what your eyes were seeing. What disturbed you so much about what you saw from Carson yesterday? Now, he's the reason they lost the football team, football game. I could put it on one person's shoulders. I played for Gary Kubiak, and when we would go and have to play against the Indianapolis Colts when they had Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, Kubiak would start our week by saying to the quarterbacks, do not let this defensive line win the football game. He would say it all week, and that would be the last thing that we would hear. Don't let the defensive line ruin the football game. For the Eagles to go up second donut, the only way... The only way Washington comes back into that game is you turn the football over and you let the defensive line become dominant. And I understand there was injuries. I'm aware of that. But you are a good enough player. You're experienced enough. You're mature enough. You went through last year to understand there's a difference between being a player or a talent and being a quarterback. You did not quarterback your team well enough. You let that defensive line get going, and then they got going and going, and momentum took over. And so it's so disappointing watching what Carson Wentz experienced last year and watching him not feel the need to try and win the football game every single play and see the results of carrying that team to the playoffs. It's so disappointing to watch him come out and do that yesterday because he tried to win the game every single snap, and in turn, he loses the game. I don't want to hear about who wasn't there. I don't. You're a good enough player. You're paid that amount of money. When guys aren't able to play, you're good enough to make sure that your team beats the football team that still, even with those guys out, isn't as talented as yours. Mm -hmm. And so I checked my notes. At halftime, I wrote, the quarterback's holding the ball too much. They cannot survive this way. If Carson Wentz does not fix this today, today, then they've got big-time problems moving, moving ahead in these coming weeks. Yeah, all right. Uh, RC has been having some technical problems, so we're thrilled to have you with us. R Ryan Clark, your thoughts on what we saw from Philly yesterday? Listen, Carson Wentz started the game out on fire. Dallas Goddard was involved very early, not Zach Ertz. And then he went into Carson Wentz Superman mode. But that's what we applauded him for last year. When you lose your top running back, when you have wide receivers that are down, Carson Wentz carried this team to the playoffs. We didn't see that type of Carson Wentz yesterday because we didn't see it here. He didn't play the game with his mind. You look at the pick by Moreland. You look at the pick by Fabian Moreau. These were very easy throws for Carson Wentz in which he telegraphed. And after that, he started to press. He allowed this D-line to get to him he didn't protect the ball he didn't find ways to help his team make plays and that's what Carson Wentz is paid for I'm not going to say defensively that the Washington football team isn't good because they have good players they're obviously very talented up front but there is no way that this team is supposed to stymie the Philadelphia Eagles the way they did down the stretch once the Eagles went up 17-0 I believe Carson Wentz will get it fixed because I believe that he is that talented. But he has to look at this game and say, even though I have new weapons, I do not have to force the ball. I don't have to win the MVP this week. And it felt like Carson Wentz was trying to do that the entire second half once he threw that first pick to Fabian Moreau after two minutes in the first. That's right. Again, and this all starts with a 17-0 lead. So it is confounding. Meanwhile, I think a lot of people will probably hear Dan say, don't let the defensive line ruin the game. Rex, what does that mean? How did they let that the, the strength of Washington, they have five right. first-rounders on that, uh, on that defensive line, how did he let them ruin the game? Well, because all the impact. I mean, you have eight sacks in that game. And it, it, I go back to my, you know, Weave Eubank, a lesson I learned from Weave Eubank 100 years ago mm -hmm. was it starts with protection first. You got to protect your quarterback. And to me, I don't care about all the fancy routes and all that stuff. Protect the quarterback. If your five can't block them, you better block with six. So is that on Wentz or is that uh, on the, the play no, design, I, the coaching staff? Well, I think that's it, it's part on Wentz and it's part on uh, the coaching staff, certainly. But to me, this game right here, what Wentz doesn't understand is you have to protect the football team. And, and that's what he didn't do. Protect the football. And sometimes the right move is to throw the ball away. 
Here we figure Greeny. that whole division is going to be Philly and Dallas, and they both start out 0-1. Washington with a win. Giants play tonight. Dan, I, I got 15 seconds. Go. Rex knows when he used to play against Tom Brady, Tom Brady would go number one to ball out because he knew the only way that that team was going to beat the Patriots was sacks and turnovers. Carson Wentz has to learn that. Get the ball out of your hands. You got week two to figure it out, and that's an important thing for this offense. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.